Determine the moment about point A of each of these three forces acting on the beam. Okay, so this is a little different than the usual Stax problem where we're finding the reactions acting on a beam, but we're gonna do the same process. So, unlike a lot of Stax problems, we have a beam that has a width right here. So we need to account for that when we find these moments. So let's, of course, start the find variable. You stay organized. So we're finding the moment created by one by force one about A. So let's do mark that. Um, well, let's do M1. And then the same thing is be moment about A from force two. Let's mark it like that. Moment two. Moment about A of force three. Okay. And instead of doing a free body diagram, I thought let's do something a little different. So let me first point out where point A is right there. So let's say we have point A right here, and we know the moment is path independent. So it's only a straight line from the, uh, the point to where the force is being applied. So if that is point A right there, and we have our moment arm going there, that's going to be 8 feet, sorry, feet. And we have the force being applied here. It's going to be force one. And see it's perpendicular between the moment arm and the force. Five pounds. So we can simply let M1 equal 375 pounds. And at eight feet away. Okay. And we're going to define counterclockwise here as positive. So this is going to be a negative moment because if you can see it is going clockwise here. That makes sense. It'll be this rotation be going in this direction counterclockwise. Okay. And if you plug that into your calculator, you should find moment run around A to be negative 3,000 pound foot of torque. Okay, and that will be our first unknown. 1,000 pound foot. Okay. And then moment two, let's do the same little diagram. Uh, point A right there. We have force two. Going a little further this time, and it's acting at 14 feet from point A. And we have an angled force here as well. And it's acting to three, four, five triangles we often see. Three, four, five with a magnitude of 500, 500 pounds. Okay, so we need to find the force as perpendicular to the moment arm here. So it's simply gonna be, if I draw two components right here, I'll be the vertical component and that'll be the horizontal one. The vertical component is gonna simply be four over five, five, hundred pounds okay because you can really think of this vector as a triangle here and if you have the hypotenuse and you want to see how much this hypotenuse is traveling in the vertical direction it would be four okay so we don't even have to do any trade for that so let's set moment two Again, clockwise is going to be positive for us. Moment two, set it equal to 
or five, 500 pounds, and it's 14 feet away. And that is gonna be equal to, sorry, I should also say that because we labeled this as a positive moment, as, as counterclockwise being positive, this will be acting in the clockwise direction right here. So it will be a negative moment, be a negative 500, not 5,600 pound foot of torque. And that's gonna be a second unknown. Pound foot, perfect. And then for our third moment, force three, we don't need to split this into two different components here. So same little diagram at point A right here. And we have this big long moment arm which should be spanning 19 feet. Spanning 19 feet right here. Okay. And that'll bring us to point B right here. Point B. And if we go down half a foot, that'll bring us to where the force is acting. Mention that 0.5 feet. Okay. And that's acting 30 degrees away from the vertical right here. Okay, so as we know, in order to find a moment, we need the moment arm to be perpendicular to the force creating the moment. So if you split it into two components right here, we got, let's do force three in the Y and force three in the X right here. Force three in the Y right here, we know we can slide vectors. So we slide it back right there to point B. Then we're now perpendicular with that lever arm for, for A. So it's a moment on color again. Moment three, this can define counterclockwise is positive right here. So moment three is gonna be equal to it's gonna be a negative moment, I should say. It's gonna be, so we got, force three is 160 pounds. 60 pounds, and we need to find that vertical component. So in this case, we're gonna take the cosine of 30. Finding that vertical component right there, it's gonna be the cosine of 30, because we have the adjacent side right here and have a hypotenuse. Okay, and it's me acting 19 feet from point A right there. Okay, and then we're gonna be taking a look at the X component here because it is also creating a moment right here. And we know we can slide vectors, so we can slide this one all the way over here. We slide it all the way over here. We now have a nice perpendicular right angle here. And we know this distance is going to be half a foot. So if we find the force is 160 pounds, and this is going to be the sine of 30 to find that horizontal component, and it's going to be acting half a foot away. Okay, and this is actually going to be a positive moment because this force will be making, be spinning, uh, I should say, counterclockwise about point A. So we take the moment arm right here, and the force is acting like this, be spinning like that around A. Okay, and so if you add these all up, plug this into your calculator, you should find M3 equal to negative 2,593 pound foot of torque, okay? 
and that would be the our last unknown pound foot and you successfully answer the problem right here those are all our nouns